I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to the third and final part of our series of static routing discussions in labs. And even if you're comfortable with static routing for your CCNA and CCNP exams, we're also doing some routing table lookups, some pings, some troubleshooting, and some debugs. So something here for everybody. If you want to watch the first two parts, if you're on YouTube, they're in my YouTube channel, of course. You can just look to the right side of the screen and see my list of other videos. And if you're on my website, there are links underneath the screen that will point you to the first two parts of the series. Just to bring you up to speed, a little bit of a reminder as to where we are right now. We've got a hub and spoke network. Routers 2 and 3 are the spokes. We want router 3 to be able to ping router 2's loopback address that you see on the screen there, the all 2's address. And in the previous part, part 2, we put a default static route on router 3. And that's what you see here. Remember, whenever you see that asterisk, you're looking at a candidate default route, which in this case is our default because it's the only candidate we have. So there's our default route, our static default route. But when we send a ping right now to 2222, remember what we got? It's a very unusual looking combination. U dot U dot U. U dot U dot U. So what that means generally, 99% of the time, is that a downstream router is getting the packets but doesn't know what to do with them. And remember when we didn't have a default static route at all here on router 3, you remember what happened? They showed up as unroutable when we ran the debug. So let's run debug IP packet, a great debug for labs. Always want to be careful with running this in a production network because it can overload your router. It's very verbose. So we're going to let that debug run and you can see just from the ping we're getting quite a bit of information. And you can see the source of these replies that we're getting is actually router 1. We're not getting replies from router 2's loopback. You can see that they are going out. And before they weren't even going out because they were unroutable. The problem right now is that router 1 does not have a path to 2222. And we can look here and it's exactly what we expect. It's the directly connected network only but there's no entry here that would match 2222. So router 1's just sending them back and saying, hey, basically, I don't know what to do here. So the reason we are doing it, and the reason I wanted to point that out, it's not enough for the local router to have a path to where you want to get to. All the routers in the middle have to have a path too. And remember with hub and spoke, the traffic's going from router 3 up to router 1, and then router 1's got to decide what to do with it. So we're going to configure a route here, a static route, and we always use the IP route command, but where on router 3 we configured a default route, a default static route, we're going to configure a host route here, and that will match one and only one destination by default. And let's use iOS help here to see what we need to put there, prefix mask, and for a host route, we want an all ones mask and we know what that looks like in, by, in uh, decimal. So now we've got an option to say okay we want to use this local exit interface or we want to use this specific next top IP address. So that's what we're going to do here is specify the forwarding routers address. Remember when you put an IP address here at the end of the IP route command it's the next top router. When you configure an interface it's the local router's exit interface. So let's enter that command. And so far, so good. Let's take a look at the routing table. And you'll notice there is no asterisk here because it's not a default route. It is simply a static route. And don't worry about all these codes yet. Unless you're working on the NP, you probably need to know all of them then. But they will come to you. So right now with S with static then, let's go ahead and ping router 2's loopback from router 1 and make sure we can get there from here. And we can. So let's go back over to router 3 now. And the pings are going through. And here's the result of the debug IP packet. And you can see that again we are sending packets and we are receiving packets, RCVD for received. But notice the source of these now. 
So we're pinging 222 successfully. We knew that from the ping anyway, but uh, that's just another good way of verifying exactly what's going on. When you're working in a home lab, I truly recommend you run debugs regularly. And they can be a little intimidating at first because there's some output there you might not be familiar with, but that's how you get familiar with it. And it's debugs that really show you what's going on behind the commands. And it's amazing how that helps you comprehend the material, not just for the real world, which is where we all have to work, but also in the exam room as well when we're working on our certifications. Let's do a quick show config here, and I want to show you an option that we mentioned earlier, and I'll do a quick save here. Remember, with an IP route command, you can specify the next top IP address or the local exit interface. And it's also important in Cisco to know how to remove a command as well as add it to the router. So we've got the IP route command that right there that we expect. IP route. So what I'm going to do is remove it, and most of the time, you know, obviously 99% because there are exceptions. Most of the time, you can just put the word no in front of a Cisco command to negate it and get it off the router. Now, what's going to happen when I try to send that ping now? It's going to time out, but we're going to get the message we got in the previous video. See the unroutable coming up at the end of each one of these lines? That means it's not even leaving this router. Those pings aren't even leaving. You don't see anything about sending here, and you definitely don't see anything received. What we can do instead... I'll put a default static route, but this time I'm going to use the local exit interface, which I believe on this one is serial 0.31. And let's send those pings now. And they go right through. So we get the same result as we did before. I just wanted to show you that, again, you can configure a default static route either way, either with a next top IP address or with a local exit interface. Let's take a quick look at the routing table. And you can see a little bit of a difference here. Gateway of last resort is 0000 to network 0000, but it's still a default static route and the result is the same. The pings did go through. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this series on static routing. I invite you to come out to the website, www.thebryantadvantage.com. Over 250 free Cisco certification exam tutorials at latest count. And also, if you want to go straight to the tutorials page, it's simply tutorials HTM. Again, thanks for watching the video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I will see you on the website.